Hey everybody, it's George the Tech, and I'm getting to interview a special client today because not every day I get to work with commercial studios, especially studios with such a history as this one. And I've got a big team here today from Bad Animals in Seattle to tell us about the process and really more about their studio. Would each of you go around the room and tell me a little bit about who you are on the team? And uh, we'll start there, starting on the sofa. Hi, I'm Wendy. I am the production manager here at Bad Animals. I manage clients, projects, workflow, and I'm the only one that's not an engineer, so I do everything that they do not. <laughs> <laughs> Very valuable. You Everybody knows really that. We'll edit auditions and stuff. Oh, that's good. They make you do that too, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what clockwise is because I don't know if the camera's reversed, but I'll go back to Mike because I know Mike's name off the top of my head. Mike. Owner, bad animals, sound designer, primarily bad animals, and what else do I say? You're an owner who gets your hands dirty. You're actually in production and doing stuff. Yeah, I mean, we're owner-operated. Tom, yep. also owner there, too. And I've been here 31 years. You have many stories. In another time, in another place, we're going to get into those stories on another show, too. Moving on, Tom. Tom McGurk. I'm also owner. I'm a composer and sound designer and engineer as well. And I've been here 32 years. That one year, he's going to hold it over your head for the forever. <laughs> Winner. <laughs> and lastly, last but not least, in the front. Yeah, my name is Paul Miller, and I've been here full time for exactly one year now. And Happy uh, I freelance, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I I freelanced here for a long time before that. But yeah, now my home is now here at Bad Animals, and I'm a sound designer, audio engineer, and re-recording mixer, and yeah. cat lover. Yep, and I like cats. <laughs> <laughs> Norm. <laughs> I would love to share with our viewers a little bit of a slice of history of bad animals. And so would one of you gentlemen, Tom or Mike, tag team, and give us a little bit of a background of the bad animals studio. Uh, both Mike and I started at a place called Lost in Productions, which in the 70s was called K. Smith Studios, owned by Lester Smith, who was the guy that owned a lot of radio stations up and down the West Coast, and Danny Kay, the famous actor. In the 70s, there were a lot of really famous bands that came through, like Barracuda was done there, Steve Miller's Fly Like an Eagle, Stevie Wonder, on and on. And then that studio was purchased by Steve Lawson Heart. Productions. <laughs> and then he called it Lawson Productions until he partnered with Ann and Nancy Wilson. They changed the name to Bad Animals. And they built a very large recording studio at the old facility we were at on 4th Avenue, which is now going to be a... 32 story office tower yeah, like currently being built so that went on in 1999 after mike and i worked on bill nye the science guy together all the way through the run <clears throat> and after that in 1999 we partnered with dave howe who is a mix engineer who came from universal in florida and charlie nordstrom and we all bought the studio and kept it going as Bad Animals, but the post-production side. So it split off into Studio X, which was the big music room. And then we had six studios there that were post-production studios. And we just kept going until they sold the building in 2017. And then Mike actually found this place, which is Victory Studios, up here in Seattle. And it's an awesome place to be. And we had to get in here as fast as possible. So the room that we're in now was half as big because the voice booth was actually in this room. But we just found out the room that we're in was purpose built in the 90s to be an incredibly nice mix room. And it actually has turned out once we pulled the voice booth out, this room is a really beautiful sounding room. So very that's exciting. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And it looks like a nice sized room. I mean, you have a lot of space around you. Which can it's conducive for mixing, especially for television and film, right? Yeah, it's especially surround. The volume is allowing us to allow the bottom end to really come out, but it still doesn't overstep the mid-range frequencies and everything like in a smaller room. It's just all there together, and it sounds great. So You move the booth to another space, and when you guys called on me, there was a booth. But why did we have to do another one? What was the impetus of that? 
It's mainly the ADR that would come in, or games would come in, people that want to project and yell. The other booth was smaller and boxier, and you would get that kind of, ooh. It would work. We could make it work, and we did yeah. that for four years it was in there. Sure. But when the room over here, when that came available, it was a, an opportunity to have a big space like we used to have, which was called the red room over there, that had the same kind of area of 11 feet. I think it even went farther than that there. And you could project as loud as you wanted to, and you wouldn't get any echoing or you know, yeah, slap back or nothing. Great. It was a really sound, good-sounding room. Good and it for was flat, Foley, you know? good for ADR. And it didn't sound completely dead, though. It still had a character to it so that you were in a space, but it was very easy to put it to a mix. Must have been close to that golden ratio or something about that well, room. The, that yeah, I mean, the room was nice. built like crazy. It was completely lined with lead. It was yeah. the most insane builds you've ever seen in your life. The walls were like this thick and these things. And there was a space that you could go around and walk around the room on the inside. But wow. it was really a good sounding room. And we were even in that when it was in here, we were trying to, we were always combating noise. And when we built it that time, we didn't quite do it correctly, so we had some things, a little bit of problems with the floor and stuff like that. We're also on the second story, so we had to change that. And when that opened up, there is no way we were going to let anybody get in between us. Because <laughs> last time there was a guy that was mixing in there and just like boom, 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 boom. You know, so we just yeah. couldn't have that anymore. It was definitely the right move. Our timing has been really good in this whole move from Bad Animals over to here everything that's happened like this now at the booth so it's, it's awesome that's fantastic that kind of leads me into kind of like the challenges so noise is your enemy your commercial studio you want to show your clients that your noise floor is been attended to people pay attention to those details when they hire a commercial studio right. obviously a huge effort was put into getting some making these improvements what did you find to be the first thing you've noticed when the room was essentially finished? Uh, doing some commercials, so I recorded her in the new booth, and I could, it was the same woman, so I could compare it to the old booth. Oh. Night and day, really. Wow. Yeah, the noise like, we had the, the noise yeah. floor, the... the it's almost ooh. embarrassing listening to it. We had that, ooh, that was in there, the little boxy, I don't know, mm -hmm. like 200 or somewhere around there. It's like, ooh... And in there, it was perfect. Wow. See, all of us said the same thing when we walked in. It sounded like old Studio B back in the old studio yeah. over on the other place. Yeah, and you also, know, th those old studios, like you, you were explaining, the thickness of the walls. And it was a different time. It was a different so kind had, of budget. Had cork on the wall, it was made to be dead, yeah. but not anechoic. It had a character yeah. to it. It's just that... It was just really good for recording videos. Yeah, and Paul had a bunch of ADR that week, too. There was mm -hmm. two companies that came in, and everything was loud and yelling, and yeah. it was perfect. That's and I think fantastic. I want to hear from somebody else that's down in L.A. or something that's listening. They're like, what size room are we in? It sounds a little boxy. You know? mm. and we had to work with the other one a lot because the glass was so close, too. Now it's like perfect <laughs> that's so great to, that's so that. great to hear that it really and, is and, and you guys are able to repurpose some stuff right remember you're like can we reuse the doors can we use the glass yeah. and you did exactly that right yeah the oh, guy yeah. took the glass from here you should turn the camera so yeah. you can look at that yeah right if it works to do go for it because that glass is really expensive the doors right. crazy the expensive door. right yeah. So that window wasn't there until the room was built, but the guy that built it did such a good job of using the existing trim in this room that it looks like it's always been there. Yeah, so this room, the way it's... Into Mike's room on the other side. The way this room is trimmed out, the way you're seeing is exactly as it was before the construction happened, and he was able to just make it work in, and it looks, yeah, like I said, I, it, you wouldn't know that this was retrofitted in later. Pretty yeah, no, he did a great job. That that right really there, and how this how the room was built in the 90s is crazy. It's one giant piece of furniture with all this wall treatment and everything. All this fabric is like the same fabric that would be on a sofa or something. It's just insane. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely has character, right? It sounds really good. The whole room is a big like soundboard beyond where the walls are. It's amazing how they exactly. 
So it looks like in the new live room, what do we call in that room? Does it have a name, the red room or something? Is it the red booth? It's the red and the blue booth. Because on the other side, that's the other room that I'm in. Yeah. So that's why we have all these mics set up, because Paul was doing some Foley work in there. But then I'm going to use that mic here at 2 o'clock. Yeah, so you got tie lines between rooms. You can, you're both able to share that booth. It's a really great layout. Yeah, it's really, it's very nice. Yeah, how big is the TV in there that we have? Yeah, and you can That's see. That's a 70 in there. Yeah, 70 yeah, in there. Let me see if I move this. So here's through the glass, and then we have a TV in there. TV on a cart. You can move it around and you put it where you yep. need it. Yep. And then there's tie lines on either side. I don't know if it's coming through the glass. I see it. Mine. Totally, One yeah. Size for sides for Mike's room over there, blue, and then we have another set of tie lines over here. So when you look through this window, you see red because this is Studio Red. And when you look through Mike's, the fabric wall is blue because he's blue. That's our plan. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah, it makes total sense. And then and it looks like you got movable baffles. There's some things on free yeah. wheels or stands. You can the shape the room. The only thing we had to build once the room came live is Paul and I noticed that we had to build about 75 hertz, right? Yeah, there is a base build up. So Just in the corners, though. Yep. So we put the base traps up and it's gone. Do I see huge super chunks there in the corner? Is that what you did? Yep. Yeah, we built yeah. them. There's some other other baffles in front of there. I just had those moved out of the way. You probably can see it through the their black fabric. And then we have a cloud on the ceiling there. Clouds on the ceiling, boy, they sound great. Really, really helps. Yeah. And it's yeah, it's the fabric wall is all the way up to the ceiling. It's two there's it, two, two feet, feet at the bottom there for our all of our outlet tie lines and then goes up from there um yeah yeah, yeah exactly. definitely don't rec recommend extending fabric wrap walls below the outlet line what a nightmare it is to box around yeah, them we, they get banged into and we torn did box around one of them though. we did yeah there's where all yeah. the hvac control and the lights yeah switches. yeah 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 no, it's a lot of work. Had you guys done fabric wrap, or did you guys have somebody come in and do the labor, or did you do it yourself? We did it. We did it, yeah. How was that? So I put up the frames and the insulation, and Paul and Mike would come behind me with the fabric and wrap it. It's a lot of work. If you have a large monolithic surface with not a lot of small, intricate angles and channels, but I can see the one box out there, yeah. Yeah. And it definitely adds some more skill level to make it look good, right? Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, we put how many staples? Three thousand staples in those walls <laughs> when we were done. <laughs> what kind of monitors do you have in the control room there? I just saw them swing by. Oh yeah, they're uh, Mackie HR824s. I thought they recognized those, and, yeah. and I know them so well because one, I'm touching one with my left hand, <laughs> and and two, I've had them in my studio. Oh, I had a recording studio in a van, in an RV in the '90s. So I've had them since then. Oh, wow. oh I used Great to work for Mackie. <laughs> yep, I did. <laughs> so he has the 411 on getting a spare part for stuff. What was the one thing that hung you guys up, other than the fabric wall is difficult? You know, because once we had to go, like, we go through all your sheet, and then we started with those Kinetics guys, and the things were changing, because then it's the floor. And then when they showed up, everything changed with the mm. walls, the L bracing and the isoclips how those went on there the guy at craig said that the walls got to rest on those pucks so we don't put that strip down and then they rest on it he wanted everything floating like that all the way around and then but he brought different kind of pucks that were more solid on the sides to hold the walls up and everything up and i think he put smaller pucks in the middle i think that's why the, the floor we were not, getting more flex. We're not sure you're supposed to do the smaller ones in the middle, and they were getting, they were flexing a little bit too much. And so we got was... three quarter inch glue lamb, like really nice plywood. I think it was 106 bucks a piece. We did. I, we got the best gorilla glue you could possibly get, which is this $18 a tube stuff, and what were they like? Four inch screws. And we put, I don't even know how many screws into the floor, but we screwed and glued the entire thing and it just sucked everything together. So there's three layers of three quarter inch plywood in on there right now. Yeah, because it was getting uh, it was creaky. a little squeaky. Yeah, it was creaky because creaky, it was flexing. And the thing is that you were supposed to leave like a little tiny kind of a gap in between the boards when you put the two three quarters down on top of each other and that's what was squeaking so we're like this isn't going to be good and we we're all a little freaked out but tom fixed it 
<laughs> Tom might <laughs> live in a 1910 house where you have to put screws into the floorboards all over the place to not drive the family crazy. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Well, no, I mean, it's the pucks were doing their job because yeah. we are we're not on concrete. We are right. there's huge yeah. uh, downstairs here. So we needed to float that and it needed to move independently. Yeah. But it's just those pucks caused so much uh, like excursion that it was creaking everywhere you walked. Yeah. But with that really nice, what is it? I can't remember what kind of plywood it is. But is it's, that furniture? Plywood. Yeah, it's like the furniture grade plywood where there's no voids whatsoever in it. And then just, I think it's a tube and a half on every sheet. Yeah. And then just as many screws as we could possibly put in there. And just cinched it all up and locked it in. So the whole floor is moving on it. Like, yeah. step on it now, the weight gets distributed out all over the place. And so there's no creaks or anything. Yeah, these are the, as they say, the devils and the details that you well, guys remember. that was remember. the magic sauce. The second that was done, we all walked in there and we were like, whoo, oh, this sounds <laughs> like, that was when we really got to hear the sound of the room. We were like, oh my gosh, this room sounds really good. Before any of the wall treatments or anything like that. That's that awesome. Really yeah. Is it going to work when you're floating a room on top of another existing? You're not on a slab. You're on an open cavity below. So getting that yeah. noise floor down is not an easy feat. So I'm really glad to hear that that worked out. Getting the right number and the spring rate of those pucks so that everything's distributed evenly. And it's definitely challenging. I have a client where we floated this huge vaulted ceiling and it's floating on springs. That's what and our ceiling is. That's too. Yeah. yeah. And the spring, because it's vaulted, it's hanging like this. Oh. So the spring rates have to be heavier at the bottom and lighter yep. at the top. It's complicated. And that's what the kinetics engineers were able to map all that out and ship them yeah, more exactly. A, when, some yeah. program they run for all this stuff. It's pretty wild. That ceiling yeah. is crazy. It's got the green seal around it, but it just sits there and floats on its own. Yeah. We don't have, we used to have this dump truck that would yeah, throw right outside. the garbage and slam the walls. We hear it in the building but it doesn't get through ever again and that's so cool nice <laughs> seagulls nothing yeah because we're right it's next to nice. puget sound so we have all these seagulls we used to hear because there were windows in that room on the v very outside wall man that's that's so gratifying i can't tell you I, i'll have many different projects of different scales and budgets all going simultaneously sometimes taking two more or more years from like conception to finish right and right now I'm waiting for, I don't know, seven of them to finish. This is the moment I wait for yeah. because it's like I, all these theories of technology and methods and you don't, I can't obviously hang out and just watch the guys build every day and watch. So it's at the end of the day, it's completely up to you guys really to make sure that all the details are looked after and you guys obviously yeah. nailed it. The guy, the bill, bill, the builder that we used, Bill he was, uh... Bill and Graham. They're Billy really Graham. good to have around. <laughs> Billy Graham. You know, the Billy Graham would, uh, we would talk, bounce it off, talk about, is this going to work this way? And he did a really good job of, I guess, being patient with us and listening. That's so important, man. I'm telling everybody listening, if you can find a contractor, I would rather that they have never, ever built a studio in their entire lives than have yeah. built some, but not be able to communicate and listen. If you got a guy and a team that you can talk with and talk through things and solve problems together, man, that's a great contractor. Yeah, Bill was really good in that reason. That's yeah. Awesome. I think the coolest thing is the height of the ceiling, though. You know, it's like magic. 11 feet of ceiling just opens the room up like crazy. Nothing like it. I know we worked hard to come up with a layout that would maximize that ceiling. That well, would... instead of being a booth, it's a space. It's yeah. so much nicer. All of us voice actors have these things behind it. This is a studio of bricks, right? These yeah. can find little spaces. They have horrible room mode resonances that are right in the voice range, 140, 180 to just a nightmare. And uh, to not have to think about that, all you had to deal with was that low end fundamental resonance that you were still dealing with in those super chunks and in that the corners. literally was only in the corners. No, I mean, it was, you could hear it picking up in the room, but we, okay, we okay. literally, you could hear it localized to the corners. It was really weird. Yeah. So Paul and I came in on a Saturday and we had a bunch of insulation left over and we cut it into triangles. Yeah. And we stacked all those triangles up in the corners and it was gone. And we were like, yeah. And then Paul found me a uh, this guy in Mumbai who had built some of these frames and I just grabbed the thing and figured out how they did it and we built six of them and put them together. 
Awesome, awesome. So, I wish you had. Uh, I wish you had a time lapse of stacking all the slices of cheese into the corners. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a few. We repurposed the HVAC too. Yeah, and it's it's really super quiet too. It's great. Excellent. Does that room have its own zone? It, it has its own zone and its own con yeah. own controller. Yeah. Yeah, that's really no, important. No carbon monoxide poisoning in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a I real concern. You all three of those doors, you're pretty much sealed in. Yeah, it's hermetically sealed. Because you look in there when someone's in and the doors are closed and there's no sound coming through. It's awesome. Anyway, guys, I don't want to take any more of your time, but I just want to leave as a parting shot. What do you think it, about working with me? Did it help this project? Did it help, do you think, save any money? Because, you know, this again, this is doing a project of this scale is definitely something you guys I appreciate. You took a chance on me to do something of a, a larger scale than what we would normally do with homes. Do you feel like it had a real for, benefit? For us, the first time we did it, we didn't have no direction. We had one guy he just shooting arrows and missing. <laughs> yeah. But we, had yeah. To, but we had to move fast and stuff. At least you with you, you gave us a direction and places to go. Especially with the kinetics people and resources also that we could look at and go out and find. And then we could still ask questions through you, through them, through Bill. And we could talk about this stuff constantly for five months because we had no direction. And that's what I was looking for to say, well, listen, we need to do this right. <laughs> if we had to do this a third time, we would be on a cement slab. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. <laughs> yeah. In the perfect world, that's the thing, is getting it on yeah. a cement slab. Cause that, Absolutely. That's the big thing. But, I mean, you gave us a direction and to go and find those people and stuff, too. That's what we really needed to and get when, us started. Yeah, and when Bill needed. was doing stuff, too. No, it's yeah. it was really good. Because you weren't going to build plans. We weren't going to get plans, like, yeah. drawn out and stuff like that. It just wasn't going to happen. I can get someone to draw plans. You can bring in the big guns, the Walter Stork of the world, okay. Storks of the world, all this stuff. And they might give you this incredibly well laid out package that covers every detail and you'll pay through the nose for it. Yeah. And so what you guys, where you saved money was that you had to solve more problems yourselves and be a little bit more resourceful. Yeah. But the end result, you guys are happy and that's what makes me happy. I guess the fun part of it too is we know exactly what it is. We know exactly what it took. And like I say, if we had to do it again, I, we'd have a clear picture of what we want to do. And it can be done quicker, obviously, too. But <laughs> the kinetics guys came in and they started saying things. I was like, oh my God, okay, it's got to be this way. We're going to change it this way. The closet, all that stuff. Bill's like, well, it's got to be this way. We can't do it that way. There was people all around us. All our parents were with us all the time. <laughs> it's a collaborative thing. A collaborative thing for sure. We're all pretty happy about everything. So That's great, man. It's nice to have a good ending. <laughs> I'm glad to see you're back to work and you're using it and it's just part of your day to day now. We really, we worked all the way up until what, two weeks, Wendy? Yeah. And then. Gosh, this room got demoed in three days. He took this down and then we moved the glass and we were up. Carpet within, guys came in. Yeah, two weeks. I mean, it was the carpet guys came in. And and we were still working because then we used my side because mm -hmm. I have a little booth in there. Yeah, that's the hidden cost of building is the downtime and minimizing that downtime is super I important. We, I think it, it all worked pretty good. We we're pushing our dates because we had these pilots that were in and they were changing and everybody was changing and Wendy's going, what do we do? Can we Poor do Wendy. this? Poor Wendy. Yeah, yeah Mike, that's... I heard Tom had a little fight. You guys want to talk about it? <laughs> Next time I make it up to the PNW, as you can see, I'm a mountain biker. I love mountain biking, oh, yeah. and I will come up there. I'll I'll rent a uh, an Evil, which are made up there, and I'll come ride and I'll come see the studio and visit my friends up there. I'm overdue, yeah, and I can't wait to come see you guys in person. Yeah, cool. Absolutely. All right, very good. Excellent. Thanks. Folks. Thanks a lot. What a blast.